Hey guys, Josh, Happy Little Landscapes, back again. Today we did a 12 by 16 inch canvas, took eight colors, maybe five, six tools. So if you wanna learn how to paint this painting, stick around, we're gonna show you what kind of colors you need, uh, what tools you need, make sure you got your paint thinner, got your Peter bucket, and uh, we'll get ready to go, just like this. All right guys, we have sap green, Van Dyke brown, Prussian blue, alizarin crimson, midnight black, titanium white, Indian yellow, and bright red. So we're gonna get started right here. We're gonna go just right into our bright red and a little bit of our Indian yellow, just kind of mix them right on the brush. I usually do it right in between there. And we're gonna come up here and we're gonna make a pretty little sunset sky. Let's start that, maybe a little bit more yellow for me. Depends on how much you grabbed. This, go right into our alizarin crimson, make one of our dramatic little skies here. Kind of mix it up, maybe just a little bit more. Mix it up, mix it up. Make sure you've got these angles. Don't want to have it just straight lines. You know, if you need to make like a you know, circular shape, it's up to you. Whatever you want to do. But you want to have a little bit of the crimson in between your yellow. Otherwise, when we put the blue up there, it's going to go green. All right, put a little blue, maybe a little over there. We're not trying to blend anything in. We're just trying to drop in some color right now. A little bit of black. Mix that all up in here. Mix it all together. I go around the edges of our canvas. What we do around the top here. And then I can lock it down and we'll be ready to go. At the top. I don't like having the edges of the canvas unfinished. You know, it's just you never know if somebody's gonna frame your picture if they buy it, or if it's just gonna sit there and where they're gonna put it, they put it coming down the stairs and you can see the top being all white. I've done it before and uh, it doesn't really look the best. It looks unfinished. Let's throw some blue in over here maybe. We'll make a little, I just want a little bit of red in the sky. A little bit of red come down over the side. I'm trying to stay out of your guys' way so if I look awkward, that's the reason. A little bit more black up in here. A little bit more actually. I like really dark, really dark, striking colors that kind of contrast off of each other. All right, throw a little bit in on the sides. Down here along the bottom, just back and forth. That'll just clean our brush off. Makes it a little bit easier to go. All right, now we'll take our two inch brush. Sorry that I gotta come in front of the camera and mix all you guys up here. And we'll just start going like this, just very lightly blending. Crisscross strokes, just in fast motion, right? We're making X's, back and forth, back and forth. I'm just gonna blend it until you can't really tell where the blue and the red and the black and the orange and everything start and stop. Like that. Kind of hard to do it without standing in your guys' way. Just very lightly. Swipe side to side to get rid of all those brush strokes. Come down here and do it on the bottom. What I did want to do though is I want to throw a little bit of that orange and yellow down in here. Okay, just down the bottom, we're going to have a little, little pond down here. Maybe a little bit of the red, a little bit of the crimson. We'll just kind of mix it up very lightly. Just so we can tell there's something, something down there, some kind of color down there. And we'll just back and forth, just like that. It's going to have a lot of reflections in it anyway, so the color doesn't have to match perfectly, but we kind of want it there for our, our mind's eye to see where we're going. Now we'll clean off our brush. I use a Jasco brush cleaner. You can use mineral spirits. And we've got our old trusty bucket down here. Bucket looks something like this. It's got a golf ball basket down in the bottom of it really helps for keeping your house clean you don't want to be taking your brush and beating it along the side of your easel you're just going to fling paint thinner everywhere and that's going to ruin your house so if the missus doesn't mind or if your husband doesn't mind you're getting paint thinner all over the house do it bob's way if not get yourself a two dollar bucket from lowe's find something to put in the bottom of it so you can just beat the devil out of it there we really want to dry off our brush we're going to wash this other one inch brush so we've got clean tools to start with. 
Gotta have clean tools if you want to have a pretty painting. Alright, take a step back and look at this sucker. Nice and pretty colors there. They do a little bit better job blending. Again, you want your brush to be dry when you're using it, so make sure it's dry. And we'll take a little bit of our, it's not bright enough where you want it, take a little bit of titanium white in there. And just mix it back and forth, it'll brighten it up, brighten up any other color that you have on there. Back and forth, back and forth. Side to side, we'll take out all of our brush strokes. And if you did your job well enough, you're not going to transfer all that dark color. If it's nice and blended up here, it's not going to transfer down into your lighter colors. Right, get it across the whole thing. And then we'll go in and we're going to mix up our mountain. I'm using the small Bob Ross palette knife. Uh, you can use the large one if you want. You can use the plastic ones. When I was first learning, the plastic one was my best friend. I couldn't get this sucker to work. I couldn't get the snow to break couldn't do anything so the plastic one seemed to work really well for me and it was you know inexpensive so what we're gonna do is mix up our kind of mountain color you don't need a lot of paint but you want to make sure it's nice and marble uh, nice and mixed up you don't want to have the marble look here this nice dark color we use the black the crimson and the blue in order to make this mix it up grab a little bit of white not too much, and you'll see it's kind of this grayish, blackish color. You want to mix it with the white, just a little bit of white, and that's going to make it look a little bit further away than the darker trees that we're going to put down underneath. So we'll wipe off our knife right there. Come in, grab a good amount of, of paint on the palette knife. I don't know how well you can see it, but a good amount, good little roll. Let me show it to this camera. Good little roll of paint. And we're going to come up and make our mountain. You don't want to lose all of the pink sky, but you don't want to have your mountain too low either. You're going to run out of room. So, and we don't want to have this one too crazy. We're just going to come up like that. Yours can be a different shape. Doesn't The shape isn't, doesn't have anything to do with what you know the tutorial is. If you want to have it real pointy, you can have a pointy mountain. You want to have a rounder mountain, you can do that. All we're doing is just dropping some paint onto the canvas. As you can see, we've left a little bit of that pink color in our sky. But first, what am I doing? I'm getting too far ahead of myself. And this happens sometimes when I have a sky like that, I'll forget to do it. We'll put our clouds in. So what we'll do is we'll take a little bit of the alizarin crimson, and we're going to stay along the edges of your red, right, or your pinkish color. And maybe we'll drop it in like this. Just come down, right? We all we did was make a real messy shape, bigger up top and then thinner as it gets down. And then we'll just take it and blend it with our two-inch brush, just very lightly blend it by making circles just like this. And all we're doing is we're just giving the shadow to the cloud, right? Take our brush. Now that we've made our mountain. We got to be careful. Go up, up side to side. We're gonna switch colors and maybe go with our our blue and black mixture. All right, we'll add another cloud up here, sort of in the same way, just a real messy shape. Again, it doesn't have to be a perfect shape. Clouds are not a perfect, there's no defined shape for a cloud. All right, we'll go back and forth. We come back and take our white. Let's switch to a fan brush. It seems to be easier for people. When we switch to a fan brush, we'll make our clouds just get a little bit on there. And we'll just kind of touch it in different places. I right? don't need a lot because we're going to blend it out. It's going to be real soft. Just kind of dab it on there. And all we're looking for is a couple little bits of white on there. So when we take our, our one inch brush and blend it, they just kind of blend in nice and soft like that. Right? So what we'll do, just by barely touching, we're just going to make a few little circles. All we're doing is just disturbing the paint that's on the canvas. We're not trying to blend it away. You want some areas lighter than the other areas are. If it's too light, you can take it and just keep mixing. And what it'll do is kind of mix in with that shadowy color that we put behind there, either the crimson or the blue and black. 
and it'll make these nice soft kind of puffy clouds. And then you can always go back in if you want something different or you want to make it more pronounced, right? Put a little bit more white in there. You can even mix it with your with your fan brush. It doesn't matter. You just barely want to kind of disturb the color, right? Just make a mess. That's all you really got to do when you paint like me. We're going to make a mess. This is right here on my apron. These are for sale on my Etsy shop. Make a mess. And then we're just going to take the bottom of our clouds and we're going to fluff them up and come to the side. Just very lightly. You're only using a few bristles on your brush, right? And as long as you have blended in your cloud well enough, it's not going to transfer to the other side or kind of move or get mixed in. It's one thing that always blew my mind when I watched Ross is he'd make these clouds and then he'd swipe over it and you go, how did that not get messed up? Because it's, you know, they're on there light enough that they're not going to get all screwy. So you can do a bit more, make this side a little bit brighter. Again, we're literally, all we did was make a mess, swipe it up, come to the side. That's literally it for making clouds. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be a perfect shape. And again, you don't want too many. You want to leave a little bit of area in between. And you don't want to have too many because then you just, you just lose all your color from, you know, lose all the colors, the pretty colors that we put down there, right? And you don't want to lose them all. So we'll wash our brush here real quick. Clean tools. That way you're not going to mix up any of your colors. You're not going to get all mudded down when you have something different here. All right, now that we've got our clouds in there, I'm thinking I want to make my mountain a little bit taller. All right, so we can go back in. That's the best part about painting. It doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be right on the first try. You can always change something. You can add it. You can move it. You can do whatever. So don't get discouraged if your mountain didn't come out the first. You know how you wanted it on the first go. You can do whatever you want. It literally doesn't matter. Yeah, this one's not going to be too, too crazy. Let's not get crazy here, right? Just a couple little bits. Shoot, we need to make it come up. We'll come crazily up into the sky like this. Right? Just don't make it too big. Side over here. And all we're doing is dropping in the color. All you want is this very top line, right? You don't want it to be perfectly straight. You want to have a couple little imperfections in there. This makes it look like a more realistic of a mount. Right? Now we're going to take and we're going to scrape off all this extra paint that's underneath. I mean, that even gives you an extra little line that you can go back and change something. Right? Move it again. We're going to scrape it off because we don't want it to be too thick on it. And again, you don't have to go side to side. I always forget that when I'm doing them. You don't have to, your mountain doesn't have to span from side to side. Then we're going to take our one inch brush, we're just going to pull it down and kind of make these little angles like this, right? Down into here, come the other way. And what this does is it just gives you an idea, you know, where your, your highlights are going to be, where your shadows are going to be. Pull this one off this thing. Come down. Doesn't have to be the same. You can make it look however you want. You can have, you know, this peak right here come in front of this peak behind. You got this one. They're all kind of crisscrossing. And when you do that, it makes it look really neat. And we're just going to blend it very softly. And that way we've got this nice kind of foggy look to the bottom of it. If you're like me, continue it along the edge. Where we go our mountain. We're going to go off the side of our canvas. Sorry if I'm in your way there. That way when someone looks at it from the side, you've got this whole finished look to the side of your painting. That helps if you liquid white the sides as well. 
when you're doing it. So there's a corner off right there. Okay. So now we've got our cool little mountain. We've got to decide where our light's coming from. And I'd say since more of our color is on this side, and we've got more kind of dark color on this side, we'll have our, our shadows coming from over here. So in order to do our shadows, let's grab a little bit of white and a little bit of blue. We're just gonna mix them up in the same area where we had our kind of gray color. You can throw some of that gray in there. That just gives it a uh, kind of this bluish grayish look. You don't want it to be too dark. And then again, you don't want it to be too white either because it's gonna be too close to our, our uh, highlight color for our snow, right? grab a little bit of that. We're going to say that if our light is coming from this side, then we'll put our shadows over here. We just want to take and drag it down. You just want to hold it so lightly. And if you can't get the snow to break, it's most likely because you, you might not have enough paint on your palette knife. So go back, get a little bit bigger, a thicker roll of it. Maybe let's say we could put in a bit in here. In order to do long, uh, get it to break, you want to do long strokes, okay? Long strokes like that. And that way some of it will grab in different places all the way down. And you want to be holding your knife really lightly, almost to the point where you're going to drop it. Just put them in wherever you want. Come down there. Come over here because we'll have our snow coming down this way. In there. Just wherever really doesn't matter where they go because you can sit and fix them and play with them all you want. Okay, so we're going to have our, our bit of our uh, titanium white and we're just going to come down and start dropping it in wherever you, know, wherever you have your shadows. You're going to want to have a bit of your titanium white over the top and that's going to look like it's casted this shadow and you've got this cool kind of bluish snow color underneath. You don't want it to be too thick. You can literally put it anywhere. This is the fun part about paint. It's when you, you can take it, you can take your mountain, you can have it go any which way you want. You don't want it to look you know, very uniform. You want it to be sort of messy. And that's how you get these cool kind of shadowy bits. This guy went over here. Kind of nice and thick, but you don't want to cover up all that dark color either. Cover up all the dark that we use to lay it down, and it's you're just gonna look at it and wish that you had it. A little bit of shadow underneath here. All right, let the sides kind of cast it a shadow off that way. Make sure you get the peaks. Don't get the peaks. Kind of forget about them, forget where they are. Yeah, like we got our peak up there. In my mind, it's kind of throwing a little shadow maybe down this way. Again, you can sit here and play with this thing for hours. It's so much fun to play with your light and shadows. And you end up your mountains real thick and textured. It just looks awesome. All right, we'll take a little bit of our white, kind of pull it over to the side over here. Just mix them in with these kind of blue shadowy bits. It looks like just a little peak of sun has come over the side. <clears throat> That's lighting that up over there. We're going to blend all that out, so don't worry about that. You can literally do whatever you want to do. Have the peak come up over here. Like this, cast a shadow down onto this bit underneath. So I like putting in my shadows first because then you don't have to go back and try to fit them in like I'm doing right here. You know what I mean? Where you gotta have this little this little tiny area where you're trying to fit all these bits back in. And it ends up being much easier when we put the shadows in first. And then you can kind of go back in and almost highlight your shadows. And a real dark shadow off that way. All right, let's see. Now what we're going to do is take our two-inch brush. It's nice and dry. We haven't used it in a little while. 
and we're going to go the opposite way of the way that we went when we laid our snow down, right? So if we went this way, we're going to come up like this, just very lightly, very lightly. You're barely using any hairs on the brush, okay? Come up and come up this way. And all that's doing is kind of making it far off and blurry, right? You don't want to come all the way up the mountain, but you want to have a nice kind of blurry bit at the bottom. And again, you can see the brush. We didn't we didn't use very many of the bristles, just very lightly touching it. And then we'll go in, we'll take some of our white, and we're just going to start making our little circular motion. And that is going to create us this fog that we like to use. Right? You don't want your fog to be a straight line. I say that all the time. You don't want it to be straight. You want to have you know, a difference, either a like this U shape that we have, or like a heartbeat monitor, if you think about it. Kind of just mixing it up, mixing it up, mixing it up. I really like the way that one came out, actually. Get a little bit of fog down the bottom. Doesn't even have to be perfect, it could be messy. Now we're going to take our other one inch brush or your two inch brush, and just make it nice and soft. And I've got an old, beat up one inch brush. That's very different from my my two inch brush, so I use that a lot of the times. And then I'll come in here with the two inch, uh, with the other one inch brush and make it nice and soft. But if you only have one, you can use one. It's no big deal. All right, now we've got this kind of smoky, foggy look. You can even come in and put another mountain underneath if you wanted to. Uh, you can do a forest there. You can do whatever you want. So that might look neat if we did. We have a little bit more of our mountain paint. We had another. Another little peak of it coming up. Kind of like that. Got a little peaker over here too. Take a one inch brush, make the shape of our mountain. Again, we're just going to put that fog underneath it. Okay, Kinda like that. It's coming down or it's coming off to the side. Just got this fog. blue again. We don't need a lot right here because we just have these little teeny tiny mountains. Right? Get the blue color off to the side. This side is going to be on the that side. We remember we got our, our light coming in from one side. And we got lights over here on this side. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. You want to have your, want to have your blue there. You don't want to get rid of all your shadow. Otherwise, it just looks like this white peak. Like that. Again, don't make it a straight, don't make your fog a straight line. Yeah. Now we got these two little mountain peaks, and you can continue it, you can do whatever you want to do. I'm just trying to show you a few things that they pop into my head about what you can do. Okay, it doesn't have to look the same. Or anything like that. You can add color to your fog. You can add more blue in there if you wanted to. You can add a bit of the red and and, uh, and do it that way. Just keep seeing this little bit right here. You really want to make this, you know, real pronounced that there's a little shelf there that the snow comes off of. It's casting that dark shadow into there. And again, we'll just very lightly mix it up. And that creates our fog. And who knows, we might even lose some of these little mountain bits that we put in when we go to put in our trees at the end. Uh, in this instance, we're just kind of making it up as we go along, which is I, I feel how some of the best paintings come out is when you make it up right as you're doing it. And all I'm doing here is just making mine so it's not just a perfect triangle at the top. Add a little bit more there, give it a couple imperfections, and then we should be good. <clears throat> all right, now we're going to make up some more of that uh, color here with our black and crimson and blue, more of our mountainy color. But this time we're going to have it a little bit darker. We're not going to add the white to it or at least we're not going to add so much white to it. 
We want it to be darker, different from the purpley color that we made our mountain with. All right, so throw a little bit of white in there. Again, you can see it's a lot darker than it was before. And then we'll take, let me take the, I've never done a video showing how I use this oval brush, the Bob Ross one inch oval brush. Mine's nice and hard, not being used for a while. And why don't we come in and we'll do a little, we'll make a little forest of trees just by kind of popping them in. They don't all have to be the same. We want some areas darker, some areas lighter. Okay. Like that. And you don't want to cover up all of our, our fog. You want to be able to tell that there's some fog back there. Like that. Then we'll go in and kind of highlight all those. Do some white. You want it to be a little bit textured though. You don't want to have it all very soft like our fog is. You want to have a little bit of texture to it. And again, you don't have to come all the way to the side. You know, watch that brush because we're going to throw some stuff in the front anyway. Okay, clean that sucker off. Take the two-inch brush and just go up a little bit like that so I just like our clouds All right, we'll grab a liner brush all these new liner brushes that I don't even know which one to grab we'll do a couple dips into our paint thinner right and then right into that file that we had just made remember twist the brush as you pull it out it gives the thing a point We'll go back in. We'll just have a couple little, couple little tree trunks in there. Okay. Just a little bit, wherever you want. Doesn't have to be real pronounced. You're just real far off in the distance, but you want them to be in there. Like this. Make those little click sounds. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Click back, click. Most of this stuff's going to get covered up anyway. And we got our little, our little bit of uh, pond reflection that we were going to do, right? So let's get a little bit more paint thinner since we ran out. When it starts getting hard to get onto your little liner brush, that's when you need more. All right, come down. Just very rudimentary shape of our tree trunks in there. Okay, that's all you really need. Take your two inch brush very lightly and down and to the side. Okay. Now what we'll do is we'll take our one our uh, our fan brush, just pop in a little shoreline around the bottom of those trees. Okay. And all we're doing is just kind of pushing against the the canvas with our with our fan brush. Okay. Come in. Just start pulling it out. Coming both ways, like we've got this little this little pond that we're sitting in front of. And don't worry about the tops of the trees down here. We're gonna try to cover that with some snow or something. Right, now we'll go in and we'll take our uh, what brush are we gonna use? Might as well go back to our, our oval brush. Get a little bit of liquid white, drop it plain or green there, and just mix it very lightly, very lightly, and then we'll come back in and just touch every so often. Okay, you don't want to have it too thick, you don't want to cover up all of our shadows. Okay? And the more you touch, the more the green is going to change because it's going to pick up this darker paint. Okay? That's it, just a little bit of green in there. Don't need a lot. You can even put in a few bushes if you wanted to. I turn the, the brush upside down. So I'm popping in a few bushes. Take your fan brush. And then just make a little bit of a little bit of grass. All you're doing is changing the angle of your brush. Right? You want to have a little bit, a little bit of a different angle on that brush. 
and a little bit of a space in between your bits of grass, okay? If you do it all the same, it's not going to work out very well. Take your two-inch brush, just pull it straight up. Can't have the land underneath. Again, we're just making it up as we go along. Seems like we lost the majority of those reflections, but that's all right. We know there's a few of them in there. And then what we'll do is kind of make this nice and soft. You can tell where our land is and where our little pond is, right? So back and forth. You can even go back in with your your liner brush and add a couple more of those reflections down there. You might have waited to do it. I might have done it too soon. Alright, you take those, pull them down from side to side. If you keep mixing it, they'll go away. You can start over. You can do whatever you want. Let's see. Just want a little inkling, just a little bit of reflection off of the trees in the back. That's it. Doesn't have to be the whole stick. Doesn't have to be any. Okay, we got that. We go back in as well. Just with a little bit of our liquid white on the end of our dirty brush. And we'll just kind of highlight a little bit of these since we got this kind of snowy look. A little bit of snow on the top of these. That way it'll be like a fresh spring snow came through. Kind of blanketed everything. Move along the bottom. Just in different areas. Doesn't have to be perfect. Right? Don't want it to be perfect. Just tall grass if we swipe up. Then we'll go in and we'll add our water line, which is just taking our liquid white. Grabbing a little bit of it on the brush. You just want to have the smallest bit. You can always fix it or blend it out if you don't like the way that it looks either. And you don't want it to be on the same line. You want to have these different lines and that way it shows the different elevations of your land, right? You don't want to have just a straight razor blade line across the top. Right the side, like over here. Don't like it, blend it away. Right? You can take very lightly. Try to come as straight across as you can. Wash your whole thing without touching it too much. Otherwise, you'll blend it out. Back in, we'll kind of adjust those, make them a little bit thinner. You can always sit and play with it until you like it. You know what I mean? So now we've got this pond back here. A little bit of water. Got our pond, this fresh kind of snowy, fresh little snowstorm that came through and kind of blanketed all of our stuff with a light layer of snow. Wash off our brushes. Always want to have your brushes clean because then if you forget, it's going to ruin your brush. Okay, so what we're going to do over here anyway, we're going to get rid of this by mixing it up right, almost to the tops of our trees. Pulling out to the side, what we're going to do over here is we'll put in a little cat. Alright, so we'll take our brown, kind of mix it with a little bit of our white. Just like that. And then we're going to come up here and we're just going to make a little, just a little guy. Not too crazy. We have this old farmer who lives on the edge of this little pond over here, right? Like that. Make yours as big as you want. Or 
as small as you want. Again, don't worry about what's underneath because you can always take it and pull it out. Give it our shape here. That, that's, by doing this with the brush, it's just going to make it easier to add our, our highlight colors to it. You can take it out and just kind of show where, where the new bit of land is going to be there. Add a little bit more of our white. And don't over mix it this time. You want to have this marbling difference of color come down just like we did on our mountain top. Give it this effect of these old boards in there. It's a bunch of old, old wood grain stuff. Now for the side, you want it to be a little bit darker. So take your a little bit of that darker paint, mix it in with your brown. And that way it looks like there's a shadow over on this side. Okay, I can take our knife and just up and down, you can scrape down, scrape in some old logs. That way it looks like we've got these boards on our wall here. Take a little bit, scrape it off through the door. Take a nice dark colored door, door just by using our small edge of our knife. Again, you can come down as far as you want and then just shape it out later. You don't have to worry about anything. I'm going to take our white at the edge of our roof. Down. Just like that. Don't worry if you come up and out of the way like I just did. Go back in very gently. Get rid of that. Use the last bit of our white over on this side. Just like the little roof pitch here. Seems a little bit crazy. Hard to do at this angle when you're not standing right in front of the dang thing. Use the side of that end. Top over there, we realize we have to fix this side. Bam. Come back in with our brown. Make it look a little bit more. over your door and just do it again. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just like that. This old beat up old shack. And you can even take a little bit of your dark color like we're doing here. Just make our little board lines a little bit more pronounced. you want it to look. I want mine to look old. Beat to death. Just a bunch of old colors everywhere. There we go. Again, you want to make sure your side is darker. That way you can tell where the front of your building is. pitch in our roof. There we go. Take a little bit of liquid white, kind of outline our door. And if you don't make those clicking noises, it doesn't seem to work.
just let them shape the thing. Just like that, just so you can see an outline. I got this old saggy shack. I'll take the bottom of it. Throw it out to the side over there. Actually, want my door to be a little bit bigger. So you can see a difference. Doesn't have to be crazy. Doesn't have to be crazy. That thing is just messing with me. There we go. All right, that looks good to me. <clears throat> and then while we're here, since I've got the idea, let's take all these that we did well and just kind of mix them up. Just create that fog. Okay. Did some fog and that way we can stick a big old tree on top of that. Since we're thinking about it. What I like to do a lot is get the little chimney that has house as well. Little bit of black, that's all you need on the small edge of your knife. Black. Like that. Over. And then if you wanted to add some snow, uh, some smoke coming out of there, just take a little bit of your white, make your fog. Take this and just, just very lightly. And it's got to be messy. Smoke is not a, not a defined shape either. You want it to be a bit messy. Over here in our house over there. That's pointy. Fix our side over on this side. Yeah, and then you can even take put a little bit of shadow underneath this guy. Underneath your awning. Take and add a window in there, you can add a window, you can do whatever you want. To do that, all we do is kind of scratch it off where we want our window to be. A little bit of liquid white, a little bit of Indian yellow. Just make a window shape. Yeah, shape it. window so the fog is in there. Whatever shape you want. It could be a rectangle, it could be a square, it could be messy. Right. You can do whatever you want. Alright, let's see here. So we're gonna make our snow cover across the 
this wicked snow blow in. So we want to add that. And that way we've kind of covered up our lake over here. All we're doing is just taking a bit on our one inch brush. Just kind of creating our land. You don't want to blend it out too much. You want to have you know some differences of white and kind of that shadowy color we put underneath. What we'll do over here is we'll use up almost the last of our paint. Make it real dark again. <clears throat> no white with it this time, though. It's real dark. Get it to our old trusty fan brush. What I do is just kind of wiggle it on the way down and get it all inside those bristles. But you know, you don't have to do the, the entire from top to bottom. What we'll do is we'll come make a big old tree up here, right down over our landscape. So by doing that, we're just going to use the corner of the brush, just touch and push up. Right. Not even using all the bristles yet. Now by the time we come down here, then you can start to kind of rotate your brush back and forth, kind of covering up all that fog that we made in the back there, right? Almost all the way down to the bottom. You want it to be super thick, so if you don't have enough paint, you need to go back in and get some more, because you want it to be nice and thick. You want it to stick on the canvas where you have to pull your pull your brush off and it sticks to, against the canvas and makes these nice textured areas. Like that. There we go, nice and thick. You want it to be thick, otherwise you have nothing to put your your highlight colors it won't stick to anything unless you have these textured areas where you can see how it's coming off of the canvas like that. You have nothing to stick to. So we lose that bit of mountain back there. We got that. Come down, make sure it's nice and sticky. And what we'll do is we'll pull this out in another direction. Right? We've got this other little hill over here. Come down this way. doing is just just touching the canvas with our with our uh, fan brush trying to make our little grass look like that right we can take some more of our white come down this way long strokes like that now we've got this little hill on this side it's a different angle than our our hill over there it's all about angles Nothing's ever just flat. Nothing is ever just flat like that. And we can take a bit more of this. Dark mixture here. We'll pop in a couple little, a couple little grassy bits on the way down. You don't want to do too many. It starts looking really cool when you do too many of them, and then you don't like it. And if you don't like it. Blend it out. We'll probably have to go back and get some more white. And then when it gets down here, it's hard to get my details in, so I like to prop it up like that. Hard to get the details. 
with our grass bits. Snow to be real thick over here. You can use your palette knife if you want. That great breaks in your snow. Like so, and that way it's real textured. So I like the real look. And then what I like to do when we have these little edges is put like this little bit of grass, the tall grass bit that was growing right here. See what I'm talking about when I get done with it. Just a little bit of thin grass that comes out. Or bush. Some some kind of something. The lake right there. Back over it like that. Get our texture back in. It's just something that kind of catches your eye that lives out there. You take your Kind of scrape it in. It just looks like this little, little bit of grass that got, it's trying to grow out here. Okay, we're going to clean off our fan brush, and then we're going to go back in, highlight this tree on the left, and then we're going to be done. Okay, we're going to get our liquid white, make our little pile, just start mixing it up. Come in. And just very ever so lightly touch. We're going to skip, right? See me skipping as we go down? The further and further you get down to the bottom, the less and less you want to see down there. Right? And all we're doing is just very lightly touching. You don't want to you don't want to overdo it and kind of smash that all these little textured areas that we made that are kind of sticking off of your canvas. You don't want to cover all of those. You don't want to cover up all your shadows. That's the cool part about the tree is the darker bits. You don't want to cover all of those. Okay, I'm going to wash our brushes again. I think we may be done. We may add a little fence in here. I'm not sure. That's it guys. If you like this painting, I hope you uh, like and subscribe to my channel and uh, give me a thumbs up, share the video, try the tutorial, send it in to me, let me see what you got. And uh, again, this is a nice little easy one. Didn't take us too long. Uh, it was probably about 50 minutes and uh, we knocked something out straight out of our heads. It wasn't looking at a picture, didn't do anything. So let's see, uh, follow me on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash happy landscape art. Instagram.com slash Happy Little Landscapes or at Happy Little Landscapes. Uh, this painting will be available on my Etsy shop, which is Etsy.com slash shop slash Happy Landscape Art, which will take you to my Happy Little Landscapes Etsy shop. Let's see, I always see something right at the end. That nice little point up there. But yeah, like I said, I hope you try the uh, tutorial and send it in let me see what you got and uh, you don't have it doesn't have to be perfect you can make it your own it does not have to look like mine at all throw a little bit of tree trunk in here people can see it bam it doesn't have to look like mine I'm just trying to teach you the techniques that I use in order to create the painting so I hope you make it your own and uh, I hope it works out for you. If it does, send me the photo. I'd love to see what you came up with. I really do. Just a little bit of a little bit of a bush in there at the last second. But yeah, like I said, guys. 
follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, check out my YouTube channel, like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next painting.